Simple as that. Welcome back to the Maker and the Drinker podcast, proudly presented by First Drop Wines, home of the brave in Yuriutpa and uh, Ozcast Network. John Retzis, the man behind First Drop Wines. It has been a while. We need to say happy birthday. You celebrated your birthday during the week, and here we are sitting at the cellar door. It's beautiful to be here. There's new podcast equipment. It's all happening. It's great to be here. How was your birthday? Yeah, pretty good, Jared. Thank you. Welcome to the home of the brave, First Drop Wines. Um, Yeah, I only celebrated my birthday yesterday, and uh, yeah, as... As you get older, I'm 34 now, mm. so as you get a bit older, you sort of, uh, you know, just play it down a bit. Well, what's interesting is that as, as I get older and lose more hair, you look younger and I look older, even though you are older than me, so it's quite confronting. Yep, yeah, it's the old, uh, was it uh, Button, or what was his name? The- oh, Benjamin, Benjamin Button. <laughs> Benjamin Button, we've got the, the Benjamin Button happening. Yeah, this is great. Look at this. Paris is here now, and she's brought out the Mother's Milk, the Nationale, the Matador. There's a lot going on here. So, actually, the, the reason that I wanted to speak to you, because over the next few weeks, we are going to be meeting some more winemakers, um, people who experience vitic- Is it a viticulturalist? Is that what they're called? Yeah, viticulturist, dudes that grow grapes, basically. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. easier to say that um, here in the Barossa. So, uh, over the next few weeks, you're going to hear uh, from Paul Georgiatis, who looks after Paul Mara Estates, which is a, a beautiful place in the Barossa Valley, but right here, you come into the home of the Brave, there's a couple of things that look different, and I wanted to interview you about that. First of all, it's been a busy few months for you at First Drop, um, in a, a changeover of, of ownership, or you have sole ownership now, with little differences, like the logos change, which is great. Do you want to, can you talk as much as you can about that experience and the exciting opportunities it now presents you? Yeah, sure. So, look, with every uh, brand, there's a bit of evolution. As you know, uh, First Drop was born in 2004. Um, and, you know, what was cool in 2004, um, you know, maybe not so cool now. So, just a little tweak of, of logo, uh, a little bit of update, one or two of the labels. I mean, the labels were always a bit crazy, a little bit crazy for for a conservative industry, especially in 2004. But now, you know, it's uh, everyone's caught up. You had a label which caused. A bit of controversy. Are you able to talk about that, or is that something that you're not allowed to talk about? I can talk about whatever you like. Well, I want to. I want to talk about that because it is a conservative industry, and uh, First Drop is a progressive brand. It's courageous. It's bold. It's different. It stands out. But that sometimes comes with a, a few um, issues from some conservatives. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, sometimes people don't understand that uh, you know life and popular culture. Moves along, and uh, yeah, and sometimes people get offended. But you know, it's not our intention to offend anyone, really. It's our intention to make great wine and and package it in in a way where we think communicates about the essence of the brand and the essence of the wine we're making. So each of the labels are different, but they communicate for us um, the personality and the character of the wine. So you know, if everyone wore the same clothes and rode the same bike and had the same Schwatch stickers, so to their left side or right side, mm. we would be another society, but we're not. So, um, you know, it's it's important for us to, you know, to talk about our wines, our the place, the varieties and the stories and, and everything, you know, is different for that reason. I'm coming from a place of, uh, I guess I'm... There's gratitude there because I've, I've been able to form a really strong friendship with you and your family, which is great. I know what to experience here at Home of the Brave. So I'm coming from a position of knowing. However, what I wanted to ask you, for the people who walk through the cellar door doors here, what sort of comments do you get? Because for me, I'm watching people and a lot of them is... I didn't know that you did such amazing food here. Because you come to a a cellar door, you expect wine with a couple of nibbly bits. But I see the the biggest surprise from people, because I know what they're going to get from the wine, um, but it's the surprise of how good the food is. Have you noticed that as well? Absolutely. Um, I mean, wine wineries, great wineries and great holiday destinations, whether in a tourist area like the Barossa or, you know, whether you're in Amalfi or, you know, Barcelona or wherever you are, it's all about discovery. It's all about, you know, finding a, a hidden gem. And I think to a certain degree, um, you know, great 
wine experiences and great hospitality experiences are all about that. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have a Michelin star. We don't have, you know, the, some awards or what have you. But it's it's all about being authentic and wholesome. And, and there's, there's, a, there's a huge amount of um, uh, empowerment and a huge amount of uh, gratitude that we have when people come in here and say, oh, my God, you know, the wines are great. Um, the place looks like a, you know, a chook shed. Mm. Um, but, you know, the wines are great and the food's great. So... It's, yeah, it's, we, I get that a lot. But I think sometimes you go to a cellar door and it doesn't look like a chook shed. Everything's perfect. Everything's in position. Everything's pristine. So you you mentally go, well, the wine is going to be that caliber too. And it gives you a false impression of what you're going to walk away experiencing the wine. I think the feeling of the cellar door actually suits the brand and the feel of what you have created with First Drop, which represents it represents you, and that comes down to the food as well. So you walk in here now, you have a look on that plasma screen, and Paris, who's taken some of the vo- photos and videos on a dodgy phone, which is great because it represents the brand, because um, remember, we did go around in a dodgy limo for a long time with COVID, but the food all comes from love, a place of authenticity from your family. So what's your food experience and background? Yes, yeah, sure. So... Um uh, I've got European heritage and European family, so uh, my uh, Greek heritage with my parents, uh, my wife's family is Italian. Um, I've been in the wine business since the 90s, so I've been around the world you know, many, many times, visited you know, the Americas, both north and south, throughout Asia, you know, the subcontinent, um, um, absolutely through Europe. Um, so basically around the world, there's only... There's only probably Africa I haven't visited. Um, so with with those trips and you know talking talking uh, wine business and talking wine sales and um, you you pick up cuisine from not only your heritage from which is Greek and Mediterranean, Italian, French, Spanish, uh, into you know North and South America. So you 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 pick up you know me- recipes globally and you you, you the, your favourites is is what we sell and what we serve here in the cellar door. So um, absolutely proud of all the food we sell here and it's and it served here and it's 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 simple but it's authentic. Um, so you could be, you know, on a street in Hanoi. Uh, and and tiramisu has just come out, by the way, as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> and have this is some, uh, you, you know, Paris. some, I don't know, some beetle leaves. or What are beetle leaves? Um, so it's a, it's a green leaf. With uh, you know, with some filling, what could be mince of chicken, could be mince of pork, could be vegetables. Um, you know, today I'm looking at the menu. Especially, we've got Korean chicken wings, arancini balls from you know from Italy. You know, leather jackets with garlic and capers and chili. Well, that could be you know South America, could be Europe. That's a fish, right? That's not like leather jackets. You're in Bali. That's and you like go Michael Jackson's <laughs> Michael Jackson's leather jacket. No. No, it's like uh, little little baby leather jackets. So yeah, I've got a f- uh, uh, my family's been in the seafood business. So um, we uh, family interest still uh, still in the seafood industry. So we get fresh fish a couple of times a week. Um, so yeah, food is important. Food's important not only for life, but also it's important to serve serve with wine because at the end of the day, wine is uh, a condiment to food. It should should pair with food. It should. Um, shouldn't predominate. It should be part of part of every meal. So, and that's how I learned to to drink wine. Is uh, as a young fella, growing up, um, you know, we had wine on the table. Um, Do you need to constantly evolve with that too, though? Because you said on the specials board today, which I think at a lot of places you go that serve food, you've got a set menu and you know what you're going to get. However, it seems that the way that um, here at First Drop takes care of its food is whatever is seasonal, whatever is current. And whatever is something that you're prepared to try. So it's actually you come here, if you came here once a month, you're not going to get the same stuff all the time, which is a really cool experience knowing that, that you're moving with trends, what's fresh, what's evolving and what's seasonal. Yeah, it's, it's probably more what's evolving and seasonal. Um, you know, we always, uh, always learn, I've learned a long time ago that trends are, um, are just that, they just, they sort of come and go. So for us, it's all about showing an authentic expression. Um, so whether that's wine, whether that's wine packaging, whether that's food, 
Um, it's really important for me to show an authentic expression. So, you know, we don't care for trend too much. If if it's summertime and it's tomato season, we'll pick the best tomatoes and we'll you know we'll go to great lengths to you know work with three or four tomato growers out here in the in the northern suburbs uh, of Adelaide, out in the you know Virginia Two Wells area. Um, so outdoor grown tomatoes and you know the best basil and the best olive oil. Um, even though it's really, really simple, um, that's really important for us. So we'll go out of our way to, you know, I'll, I'll, if I have to, I'll drive out there and pick up, you know, a three kilo bag of tomatoes. It's, it's, it's that, it's that much that, uh, yeah, it, it means it means a lot to us because at the end of the day, we put our, you know, we put our name to all the dishes, and um, it's it's simple, but it's important that we get it right. Is that one of the things that means a lot to you too? Because um, obviously this can go back through generations in your family. So the wine that you're drinking is now 100% yours. So you have such an impact on that. But then the food that you're eating is not just a reflection of you, John, but it's a reflection of your family generations past. So to go, this actually continues your family legacy through something, as you said, like a, a shed in your Yupa. Hundred percent. So it's yeah, it's uh, it's authentic to the core of you know who, who first drop is. It's all about um, my experiences growing up. It's all about my family's recipes, or um, even the wine we're drinking right now, which is uh, the Matador Grenache. It's made in that style where you know we made we made wine growing up. So it's you know Grenache, um, you know it's ferment, fermented for four or five days, and then. You know, in old oak for a few months, and then and then bottled. It's all about freshness. It's all about um, simplicity. But it's a great it's a great wine with food. We're creatures of habit. Now, this is what I'm leaning on to you to help because um, a lot of people who get in touch with me, and there's hundreds of them who say, uh, "I didn't know about first drop, and I'm glad that I do now." But they associate uh, first drop with mother's milk. Goes hand in hand. Until they take that leap to go, actually, I'm going to try the other stuff because mother's milk is so beautiful, sometimes it becomes safe. So um, for you, I'm asking you, tell us about some of the other wines. We spoke about the Matador, which we're drinking now, which is, for me, a beautiful light wine that I can have. And it's for me, it tastes like I'm having the nicest cordial I've ever had in my life. So it's, you can easily get through that very quickly. But you have so many incredible wines using... Endless Summer, as an example, I'm traditionally not a white drinker, and my response now to people is, I'm not a white drinker, but try Endless Summer because I drink that. Um, there's a lot of different wines that you have. So for the people that are like, I drink mother's milk, what else can they get their head around? Yeah, sure. I think um, probably easier to just break things down by region. Please. Um, so the Barossa Valley um, is Australia's oldest, one of the oldest and one of the most famous wine districts. So... Famous for Shiraz. So we make a whole plethora of Shiraz from the Barossa floor and the Eden Valley um, and also some single vineyard wines. So single vineyard wines from the Barossa floor is fat of the land from the Eden Valley. They're cold sweat. Um, there's some beautiful Grenache, i.e. the Matador. It's the favourite, which is Mother's Milk, which is you know made with drinkability and honesty in mind. Um, so the Barossa is Grenache and Shiraz mm-hmm. uh, in terms of varieties and single vineyards. And then there's the Adelaide Hills, which is a really diverse um, region. You know, it's got cold spots, really freezing cold spots and sort of more more temperate spots in terms of viticulture. So um, Chardonnay from the hills um, and then Pinot Grigio from the hills – and then, you know, my favourite white grape variety, or well, one of my favourites is Arnis, mm. uh, again from the hills. That's then, what Gabby, my wife, is obsessed with the Arnis. She loves Arnis, Loves yeah. it. Who, who wouldn't? And also there's um, other Italian grape varieties that we grow up there, so Nebbiola Barbera, Montepulciano. So the Adelaide Hills is white grape varieties and Italian grape varieties. Mm. Italian grape varieties, because I think they're a little bit closer to that cooler, more moderate temperature that we you get in most of... Most parts of Italy, um, and then 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 there's the beautiful McLaren Vale with its maritime influence for Cabernet Sauvignon um, and Trigger National. So Cabernet loves an easy life like we all do, 
um, and uh, it grows really well and really consistently by by the ocean. The so. Nationale, if, if you are thinking of coming into uh, Home of the Brave, is the red label, and for me, it's like uh, I treat that as it's my special occasion wine, and it's so easy to drink, but it's like I love mother's milk, and I'm always making sure that um, it's in my, my wine rack. However, I'm like, you know what? It's been a good day. I'm going to have a Nationale tonight because it's yeah, sure. next level. Yeah, it's, it's got some beautiful concentration, it's nice richness. Um, beautiful food wine, famous throughout Portugal and Italy uh, and, and Spain. I beg your pardon. Um, so yeah, Torriga is traditionally fortified, but as a as a red wine, it's super high toned, very aromatic, um, great with tapas. So you think salty anchovies and olives and and jamon and crusty bread and a glass of national. So you know, uh, having been to Spain and Portugal uh, and spent way too much time in tapas bars. <laughs> um, yeah, fell in love with Tariga and, and really proud to be able to, to make Tariga in Australia. So we're very blessed in this country that we can grow lots of different grape varieties really well. Um, there's not many countries in the world that can do that. Australia definitely, um, because it goes its scale and because of its, um, I guess brave nature of viticulture and winemaking can can uh, can do virtually whatever it likes in terms of grape growing and winemaking. I appreciate you taking the time to have a chat. As we wrap things up, um, I think the really important thing for people to understand and the, the message is um, if you are thinking about coming to the Barossa Valley and you're thinking, I think sometimes people have two different mindsets. They're like, let's go do some wine tasting and let's go somewhere for lunch. The great thing is you can do both here. You can come and have lunch here and have beautiful wine while you're doing it and tick both of those boxes at the same time. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, that, that's, again, part of what I wanted to do at the uh, at the Home of the Brave at First Drop is to give people the opportunity to taste wine but also eat some food that you know you should you should always have with wine. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a no-brainer for me, but... Um, I'm glad. I'm glad that uh, you know we could we can I'll be able to, be able to do this. Um, and great for our great for our winery, and it's great for the region. And it's we look forward to lots of people coming to visit us. I tell you what, we've been sitting on the sofa in the home of the brave, watching the videos of you cooking all these incredible like the thing what you did with the blue swimmer crabs. I'm still amazed, and all you did was put like a saucepan lid over it, and then it changed it, and it's just. Anyway, I'm going to go back and watch that because it's going to make me hungry. But uh, John Retz, just once again, uh, have a fantastic birthday celebration week, which you are and always. You've got to get into your tiramisu because I've eaten this whole interview. <laughs> um, but we've got lots more episodes coming up on The Maker and The Drinker as well. It's it's good to talk wine. It's good to talk your passion. And you're introducing us to, to people that we may not know about and hearing their stories yeah. because everyone has a story. Who's coming up next, Protel? Do we know who's coming up next? Yeah, I think we are going to go to Paul Mara Estate, all right? So we're going to have a chat to Paul Georgiatis, who um, has been hassling me on social media because I've got a uh, Giannis and a Decumpo jersey, the basketballer, and his son loves it. But um, the, the Golden Greek. The, the Greek freak. Oh, the Greek freak. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm confusing him with another golden Greek that I know. Yeah. Okay. Well, we can talk about that off the podcast. Um, but this is these are people that I've managed to um get to know via your uh, your Christmas event. So I see your Christmas event as a recruiting drive to get people on the podcast because yeah, right. we spoke to Jason Barrett. Um, obviously, we are we're going to speak to Phil Tropiano once he gets some sleep. We spoke to Ian Hongel. Ian Hongel. We spoke to. We've yeah. spoken to uh to Charlie. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Milton. Yeah, so Charlie Milton. We've spoken to a lot of fans. And, and Mish, we had to take Misha away from his cigars and uh, scotches, but he's there. So uh, if you haven't gone back and listened to them, they are timeless episodes. And it's Adelaide is such a, a wonderful place to have these people who have had worldwide experience, but they have chosen to live Ernesto, here. Ernesto, the rubber plant, the rubber man. Ernesto, has he been back to Thailand? The coconut man. The coconut man. Yeah. I mean, the no. rubber man is a guy, another guy you know that we can't talk about. He's the guy with the golden... Anyway, we're going to wrap this up because we've got to go to the adults-only version, which will come out on Friday night after your birthday party. John Retzis, the maker. I'm the drinker. Thanks for your time. 